Hi, this is Mr. Washington. We're going to go over how to solve a quadratic equation by completing the square. The notes here um, are to the tune of Yankee Doodle. So we're going to play the tune of Yankee Doodle and I will sing you the song one time. Move the constant to the right and leave a blank behind it. Half the middle coefficient, square it and then add it. Now factor writing as a square, take the square root of it. Get the x all by itself and simplify the answer. Now let us solve a few quadratic equations by completing the square. We just sang the song that has the notes for completing the square. We're going to go over those notes. Um, as we do the example, we're going to add the box in since we've been doing the box and see what this looks like with the box. The first thing we need to do is move the constant to the right. We want to make this look like the problems that we were working on previously. So we're going to add 18 to both sides. We get v squared minus 12v. We're going to leave a blank behind it because we're going to have to add a number here um, before we move on. Negative 5 plus 18 is 13. If we draw a box at this point, just like we did in the previous video when we talked about completing the square, we said v squared would go here. This negative 12v is going to be divided evenly into these two boxes. That's why we, uh, we call it half the middle coefficient. When we half the middle coefficient, we are splitting those evenly into those two boxes. Now, the dimensions of the well, square, we're completing the square, so the dimensions have to be equal. So v minus 6 and v minus 6. Negative 6 times negative 6 is 36. So 36 would go in the box. That means that 36 would go in this blank. And what we add to one side of the equation, we also have to add to the other side. Now, we can factor the left-hand side as a square, writing it as a square. So we got v minus 6 times v minus 6, which we can write as v minus 6 squared is equal to 13 plus 36. We can add those together. And when we add those together, we get 49. Now, we got to uh, get the variable by itself and then simplify the answer. To get rid of the squared, we take the square root of both sides. The squared and the square root cancel. We take the square root of 49. So on the left-hand side, we get v minus 6 equals. We want the positive or negative value for the square root of 49. And the square root of 49 is 7. We would then add 6 to both sides. So we get v equals... 6 plus 7, and v also equals 6 minus 7. 6 plus 7 is 13, so v equals 13. 6 minus 7 is negative 1, so v also equals negative 1. Let's try a second example. a squared minus 16a plus 66. Let's think about the idea of the box that we did in the previous example. Um, but we're not going to draw a box this time. We're going to try to do it by not drawing the box. We're going to move the constant to the right still. So we get a squared minus 16a plus a blank equals negative 66 plus a blank because we have to add something to both sides of the equation. Now, think about the box. We're going to take the negative 16. We're going to divide it evenly into these two boxes. And the number that goes in that box will always be the same number outside the box. So negative 16 divided by 2 is negative 8. So we can go ahead and write that as a minus 8 squared. Draw the box if you need to. And then negative 8 squared, or negative 8 times negative 8, would correspond to what goes in this box, like we had 36 previously. And negative 8 times negative 8 is 64. We squared that number. We get 64 here also. We add those two numbers together, negative 66 and 64. When we add those two numbers together, we get negative 2. We take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square. We get a minus 8 equals plus or minus the square root of negative 2. Since the square root of a negative number, that would be an i. So we have a complex solution this time. And 2. So we would simplify that to square root of 2 times i. And then we've got to get the variable by itself. So we add 8 to both sides. We get a equals 8 plus or minus the square root of 2i. And we cannot simplify that any more than it already is.
Let's look at an example that has an odd number as the middle term. We still want to move the constant to the right. r squared plus 13r plus a blank is equal to 13 plus a blank. We still want to divide the middle coefficient by 2. Uh, half the middle coefficient, draw a box if you need to. Um, 13 over 2 would go in the top right and the bottom left hand box. So, and remember whatever's on the outside of the box would be the same as on the inside of the box. Let's draw it so we can see it. R squared, 13 over 2R, 13 over 2R. So on the outside, we would have R and 13 over 2R, R and 13 over 2R. Whatever we get in this box would always be what goes on the outside. So we can write the left-hand side as R plus 13 over 2 quantity squared. Now to figure out what goes in this box, it would be 13 over 2 times 13 over 2, which is 169 over 4. 169 over 4. 169 over 4. We add 13 plus 169 over 4. Most of us can type that into a calculator uh, that is capable of adding fractions. And when we add those together, we get 221 over 4. We take the square root of both sides to get rid of the square. The square and square root undo each other. We're left with r plus 13 over 2. On the left, we take the positive and negative square root on the right. Most of us have calculator that we can type this in uh, if we choose. Uh, we get plus or minus the square root of 221 over 2. Now, to get the variable by itself, we need to move the 13 over 2 to the other side. So we subtract 13 over 2 from both sides. We end up with r equals negative 13 over 2 plus or minus the square root of 221 over 2. We can leave it separated in two fractions, or we can combine this into one fraction. The denominators are the same, so we have one denominator, and we do not have to change the numerator since the denominators were the same. So r would be equal to negative 13 plus or minus the square root of 221 all over 2. Okay, let's look at our last example. Uh, the example here has a leading coefficient other than 1. We still want to move the constant to the right. We get 7v squared plus 14v plus a blank is equal to negative 70 plus a blank. We need to factor the 7 out. So we're going to factor the 7 out. 7 divided by 7 is 1. 14 divided by 7 is 2. We still leave the blank there. And then the right-hand side did not change. At this point, we have the middle coefficient still. 2 divided by 2 is 1. So on the right-hand side, we can write what's inside the parentheses as v plus 1 quantity squared, but the 7 is still on the outside. Now, 1 times 1, if we were to draw a box with what's inside the parentheses, 1 times 1 would give me 1 in this blank. But here's where we got to be careful. That 1 is actually being multiplied by that 7. So in this box, it's not being multiplied. So 1 times 7 would put 7 in this box. That way when I do factor the 7 out, we end up with 1 here. So 7 would be added to the right-hand side. Negative 70 plus 7 is negative 63. Now we got to get the variable by itself. So we divide both sides by 7. b plus 1 is equal to negative 63 over 7, which simplifies to negative 9. And that's quantity squared. We got to get rid of the squared, so we take the square root of both sides. V plus 1 is equal to, remember, we need the positive or negative. The square root of negative 9, since it's a negative number, we know that's imaginary. And the square root of 9 is 3, so that's 3i. And then we subtract 1 from both sides, so we get V equals negative 1 plus or minus 3i. And we cannot simplify that anymore.